Hello everybody. What you're witnessing here is literal concrete debris raining down onto the pad seconds after Booster 7 successfully fired 14 Raptor 2 engines simultaneously at Starbase Texas during its latest static fire test. Now my first reaction after seeing these images was one of surprise. I didn't expect to see chunks of concrete fall into the ground. That's why I even wrote a comment under this NFS video saying that a full engine test of Booster 7 would either carve a hole in the ground or leave the launch site with the launch mount still attached to its rear. On second thought, however, it makes kind of sense to see concrete raining down since it was 14 Raptor 2 engines firing at the same time and there is no flame diverter. Each engine produces over half a million pounds of force as per the latest update which is approximately the combined thrust of three Merlin engines or almost the identical thrust of a RS-25 four of which powered the SLS rocket into orbit this week. It even surpassed the 7 million pounds of thrust that shuttle had at liftoff, which is no trifle. Now, the thing that blows my mind here is the fact that this test saw only around 40% of the current total power output of a super heavy booster. Like, if we are already seeing concrete raining down at 40% output, what's gonna happen when this thing fires at 100% of its total power? You know, it feels like it's going to obliterate the whole launch pad, which of course is a little bit of an exaggeration, but uh, still raining concrete is no small thing, especially with the tank farm being so close. Another point of concern to me is the deluge system. It looks like it's trying, but as soon as those raptors light up, I don't know if it really makes a difference. It feels like trying to put out a wildfire with a garden sprinkler. In October last year, Elon tweeted that SpaceX was aspiring to have no flame diverter at Boca Chica, but that this could prove to be a mistake. To me, it's starting to look like a risky bet, and some people are still questioning the wisdom of not going with a flame diverter, and maybe also a more traditional deluge system with larger amounts of water. But on the other hand, we also have to keep in mind that the whole Starship program is still in development and changes are occurring almost on a weekly basis, which of course is in accordance with SpaceX's philosophy of building fast, see what breaks, and iterate from there. So I guess by the time Booster 7 shows us what it is really capable of, we will find out how good of an idea it was not to have a flame diverter. Now there is going to tell me how much I have to fuck around to find out what I need to find out. Speaking of Booster 7 and what it may have in storage for us, Elon gave us a little update regarding the steps going forward. According to him, the next round of testing will consist of a 20 second firing with a liquid oxygen tank topped off to test autogenous pressurization, then possibly one more static fire, and then finally, the long-awaited orbital launch attempt. Now, it is not expected that this 20-second test will involve all 33 engines, maybe for a good reason. So maybe it is that extra static fire Elon is referring to, the one involving 33 Raptor engines. According to the document released by NASA around two weeks ago, there is a 33 engine test still pending along with a wet dress rehearsal. So we will see how and in what order it happens. The next potential windows for another static fire event are this coming week beginning on Monday. Speaking of Starship, NASA has selected SpaceX to build the second lander for the Artemis program, which would correspond to Artemis 4. In a recent blog post, NASA said that with this addition, SpaceX will provide a second crewed landing demonstration mission in 2027 as part of NASA's Artemis 4 mission. The aim of this new work under option B is to develop and demonstrate a Starship lunar lander that meets NASA's sustaining requirements for missions beyond Artemis 3, including docking with Gateway, accommodating four crew members, and delivering more mass to the surface. NASA initially selected SpaceX to develop a human landing system variant of Starship to land the next American astronauts on the moon under Artemis 3, thus marking humanity's first return to the lunar surface in more than 50 years. As part of that contract, SpaceX will also conduct an uncrewed demonstration mission to the moon prior to Artemis 3. 
Now concerning Artemis and the Moon, as you probably already know, the current most powerful rocket in history finally had its long-awaited launch on Wednesday, carrying the capsule Orion into space. Orion is now very close to the Moon, a little over 62,000 miles as I am right in this video, and it is preparing to enter lunar orbit. Orion will break the record set by Apollo 13 for the longest distance from Earth, for a human-rated spacecraft, reaching 483,000 kilometers from our planet. It is kind of getting real now, the fact that uh, sooner or later, within this decade, humans will finally set foot once again on the surface of the moon. And this time around, it will be with the goal of building a permanent lunar base, no less. So best of luck to Orion on its 25-day journey to the moon and back. The capsule is scheduled to return home on December the 11th, entering Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 40,000 km per hour, which will definitely be a good test for its heat shield. So as Scott Manley likes to say, fly safe, Orion. If everything goes well with Artemis 1, then Artemis 2 is scheduled to take place in 2024. We will see about that, this time around with three astronauts aboard Orion, who will make a similar flight around the moon. Artemis 3 will be the mission in which these astronauts get to actually step on the moon with the help of Starship HLS, which will serve as a lunar lander and lower the crew toward the surface. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon in the next one. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.